And now, suspense. Your host tonight on the Autolite Theater is the maker of the famous Autolite Stay Full Battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. From bumper to tail light, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks. Spark plugs, bumpers, hubcaps, headlights, radiator grills, batteries, wire and cable, ignition systems, pedometers, instruments, tail lights, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations everywhere present Suspense. Begin mm -hmm. soon. Uh, one mode, please. Oh, I see here. Mm -hmm. 35. Did you want this? It should change. Thank you. Right. Here you are, honey. Newsreel, sports short, travelogue, Bugs Bunny, and a double feature. <laughs> Time you get out, you'll have a double chin. <laughs> I bet my double feature won't last any longer than your double header. Last time you went to Ebbets Field, the dinner was ruined. Oh. <laughs> well, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Ernest, you are wearing your disc, aren't you? Yes, dear. And the letter. Right here. And in my best handwriting, please open and read. It should be pinned to your pocket. You might lose it. You know, you always take off your coat with a ball to You are a fussy old hen. Well, I can't help worrying about you whenever you're out of my sight. Well, I wish you wouldn't. You perpetually remind me of my affliction. I'm sorry, Ernest, but I can't help it. Because every time you get excited, you're so likely to get an attack. Well, darling, I'm not going to get excited. It would probably be a very dull game. DeRocher isn't with the Dodgers anymore. <laughs> now you go on in. Have a good romantic fling with Dennis Morgan. All right. Have a good game. Well, what's happened? You don't know what to do. 
That's what I do mean, pal. Your jet little tap has knocked this guy right out to a slab in the morgue. Uh, <laughs> This reeks of mothballs. Let's get out. We won't find anything here. Well, we won't if we don't look. Oh, I don't know why I ever married such a determined woman. <laughs> to bolster your supine character. And, and what might you be looking for, oh, Miss Ray? Hello. <laughs> My husband needs a sports jacket, something rather smart. <laughs> might I suggest he tries upper crombie and fitches? He would, <laughs> if he wasn't an actor. Ah, <laughs> let's see, it is a discouraging job. Like me, all. How right you are. Would you believe that my husband's been in three plays in the last season and they've only run two weeks among them? Well, now he has a chance to do summer stock and in the very first play he has to be a millionaire in Philadelphia stories. <laughs> That's rubbing it in for sure. <laughs> oh, and how. That's why he needs a sports jacket. Yes. Access to supply their own clothes, you know. Of course, it's very different Look, to your... Look, Fran, Fran, I'm sure the gentleman isn't interested in my life story. Now, do you happen to have some kind of a coat that would be suitable for an idle playboy? Well, maybe. There's a grey heron going over here, might fit the bill, with a little imagination. Oh. oh it looks quite possible, eh? Hey? Mm. After all, millionaires are supposed to be very eccentric. They, they hate parting with an England love hanging on to old clothes. The one in Philadelphia story doesn't. He's perfectly normal. No. No, that would take too much imagination. <laughs> it, it would strain it a bit. <laughs> I guess I'll have to spend part of my first week's salary on a new one. What about this one? Looks hardly worn at all. Sex, this, that. Oh, well, that's not for sale, girlie. Why not? Is it your own? Well, you see, I haven't put it into my stock yet. Uh, I, I picked it up only this morning. Uh, in fact, I was just given the spit and polish when you came in. Uh, the stains on the collar. Red wine, by the looks of them. Oh, I could get an awful girl as you. I know all of the tricks. Anyway, they wouldn't show up on the footlight. Put your hands inside on. Very elegant. You look right out of escort. <laughs> How much do you want for it? Eight dollars, as is. Oh, well, it's very reasonable. I, I think I'll take you it. You will not. Why, eight dollars for, for a horrible old stained bit of junk like that? Here you are. Five dollars, as is. Take it or leave it. Well, seeing your pretty Irish eyes, I won't argue with you. Uh, shall I wrap it up for you? Oh, no, thank you. Besides, you might charge us for the dark state. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Come on. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, you know, honey, that was a real bargain. But I can't figure out why you let it go so cheaply. Oh, yes. Why, it must have cost at least 75 bucks new. Yes, and it's pleasant, darling. It was my pretty Irish eyes. Yeah, well, that was certainly a half performance of a stingy housewife that you gave. Look, Fran, you know what upsets me. Why do you do it? Oh, you're too inhibited. You know, I, I don't think these are wine stains. They don't seem to be coming out at all. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they were blood stains. Yeah, maybe the old crook bumped off the owner. I wouldn't put anything past that character. Hey, wait a minute. There's something stuck in here. Must be a very important document for someone to pin it to their person. They obviously didn't want to lose it. Please open and read. Maybe we've come into money. I carry this wherever I go. It is to advise responsible parties that I am a cataleptic. My body must not be molested for a period of 72 hours neither by autopsy nor by embalming. 
The maximum period that my attack seldom exceed four hours. Please telephone my wife, Mrs. Margaret Bowers, at Ramsey 98989. If she is not at home, try Dr. McKenzie, Plaza 36762. This is of vital importance. It may mean my life. Ernest Bowles. Well, what do you know? Oh, it's probably just a gag. Well, against whom? Darling, what is a cataleptic exactly? Oh, don't ask me. I went to a dramatic school, not John Hopkins. Well, let's look it up in the dictionary. Catacomb, catabow, catalep... Uh, here we are, catalepsy. A bodily condition marked by suspension of sensation and muscular rigidity. A seizure closely resembling death in all aspects, including the primary stages of rigor mortis. That's a grim thought. Now look, Fran, don't start getting any ideas. Uh, the owner probably just forgot to remove the letter when he sold the coat. This doesn't sound like something someone would easily forget. Hey, I wonder if he did sell it to the Irishman. Oh, Fran, why shouldn't he have? Well, in the first place, it looks too new. In the second place, there are those spots. And if they are what I think they are, blood. Well, then, then there might have been an accident. Oh, Henry. In that case, I can think of awful things happening. Yes, I know, but don't. Now, look, Fran, if the man was injured, he was probably taken to a hospital and treated. Yes, but, but think. Supposing somehow he got separated from his curtain and then had one of these attacks. Well, then they might presume he was dead and, and perform an autopsy or whatever, whatever they do. Well, in that case, the man's been buried for days. Uh-uh. The shopkeeper said he'd only just bought the coat. Well, then Mrs. Bowers must have sold it after her husband's death. Well, I think I've telephoned her anyway. I've got an awful premonition. Mm, you and your premonition. No one. Well, go ahead. Go all, call up the doctor. It'll put that dizzy mind of yours at rest. I was intending to. Hey, no, friend, you ought to give up acting. Write mystery stories. You might be more successful. Oh, I could hardly be less. Uh, hello. Is, is Dr. McKenzie there, please? Oh, oh, this is Nurse Pete. Oh, I see. Well, have you any idea when he will be there? Oh. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. He's away on vacation, motoring down south. That was just his answering service. Well, that's that. We've come to a dead end. Yes. But I can't help thinking. that Ernest Bauer has come to a dead end, too. Minutes ago. No identification. Holy cow. Why do so many people have to get knocked off on Saturday afternoon? Don't they know I'm the only one on duty? The general public likes to keep its city employees busy. Hey, you know, I'm going to ask for a raise. I've done five jobs today already. Think of the artistic pleasure you get. Remember what the super says. Embalming ain't just hack work, boys. It's an art. Why, when you get through with the stiff, Tony, it looks more lively than when it was alive. Go oh, lay on a slab. Nice looking young fellow. <laughs> You'll do a beautiful job on him. You'll have to wait. I'm not going to lift a finger until I hear the rest of that ball game. Suit yourself, bud. But the super says you've got to finish this one before you quit for the day. In just 
a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Dead Furnace, starring Margaret Phillips and Todd Andrews. While we're waiting, I'd like to tell you about a young doctor who's really going places. Now, that is. Although he wasn't going much of any place one particular day not long ago. Here he is, Dr. Nicholas Nostrum, starting out on his first case. Pretty important case, too, and Doc's got everything with him. Uh-oh, everything that is but a good battery. Say, it looks like the doc is up against some pretty stiff competition on his first case. Well, the young doc put out a hurry call, so we got up to his place in a jiffy with a brand new Autolite Stay Full battery. You see, his trouble was that his old battery was just plain run down. It was, it was weak from lack of water. Now, you know that batteries need water, and an ordinary battery needs water often. But an Autolite Stay Full battery in normal car use needs water only three times a year. Think of it. In normal car use, you need fill your Autolite Stay Full battery only three times a year. That's because of the greater liquid reserve. A Stay Full battery has three and a half times as much water above the plates as an ordinary battery. That means your plates are always covered, always packed with power. Think how important that is to your car. And consider some of these other features of the Stay Full battery. The Stay Full has extra plates. Extra plates for extra positive power. And another thing, your Stay Full battery is protected by fiberglass insulation for longer life and stronger life. So take a tip from me. Get a battery that helps give you dependable starting. The longer lasting Autolite Stay Full battery. Well, sir, we operated on young Doc's car and nothing flat. We put in a new Autolite Stay Full battery and the operation was a 100% success. Doc took off, and he got there in plenty of time to be the first man to shake hands with the captain of the local 1965 football team. Why don't you check with your Autolite dealer tomorrow? Ask him about an Autolite Stay Full battery for your car. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, continuing this story of suspense, we bring you the second act of dead earnest. You're a first-class human being until you've learned to have some regard for for human frailty. The fellow your own foot can't slip a little some... <laughs> hey, honey, come out of the ether. You're dropping more peas on the rug than in the pot. Honey, I can't stand it a moment longer. I've got to find out why that man got this coat. But, honey, it's after 5 o'clock. The shop will be closed. Well, it may not be. I'm going over there anyway. You stay here and study your language. Oh, no. Whither thou goest, I go. End of quote. Oh, good. Besides, I can show off my new coat. Come on, you may hurry. <laughs> back in a few minutes. That probably means an hour if I know an Irishman's sense of time. Let's go to the drugstore and, and call up Mrs. Bowers. settled there for the weekend. Now, take it easy, Fran. Don't get so intense about everything. Well, I can't help it. I've got a single shack mind. There, I think she's finished oh, now. Good. You're an optimist. She's looking for more change. You know, I had an instinct she was a telephone hog. Well, now, relax, Fran. She'll run out of nickels eventually. Well, eventually seems to be now a break for a change. I'm coming right back. All I'll right. wait for you. And now, look, Fran... Be careful how you handle this thing. Because if your hunch is right, and there is something screwy, well, you might give this Mrs. Bowers an awful shock. No luck. Let's go back to the shop and see if that man's back yet. Mm 
Oh, Mr. Murdoch, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, the young lady with the Irish eyes. Uh, and what would you be wanting this time? You sold my, my husband this jacket this afternoon, remember? Yes, I remember. I practically gave it to the man. It, it had mm. some stains on it. Sure, I told you that. No, 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 don't tell me you're asking me to take it back. Second-hand goods are not returnable, no, no, girlie. No, we don't want to return mm. it. Those were blood stains. They want to know where you got it. And what business might that be of yours? It may be a matter of life or death. Oh, come on now. You, you, you're exaggerating. I assure you I'm not. Well, I don't remember where I got the oh, thing. Oh, that's nice. Now, look, you told us you picked it up this morning. You must have a very short memory. Hold your horses. What is this? The third degree? I or? want to know. We just want an answer to my question. Where did you get that coat? Then you answer me one of my own. Why is it you have to know? There was a letter pinned in the pocket saying that the owner of the coat had a tax, which made him seem to be dead when he's really only in some sort of a trance. Now, sometimes they take unidentified corpses to the morgue where they embalm them and drain all the blood out of them. You, you wouldn't want that to happen to someone who is alive, would you? Indeed, I would not, my dearie. Devil a bit. I'd never have touched the thing if I'd known there was a curse on it. I'd have left it lying on the street where I found it. Well, you just found it in the street. Well, you, you, you see, uh, there was an accident. <laughs> now we're getting something. So it was an injured person's coat. Well, now, look, how did you get the coat off? They the, the propped his head up on it, and, and when the ambulance took him away, they just... Where left was this, and when? After lunch, West 12th Street, opposite Granny's Movie Theater. Come on, let him, let's go back to the drugstore. Oh, oh, oh for, for the love of God, don't give me away the police. Hey, young lady, you... Now, this is the devil of a business. Look up the number of the city morgue while I call Mrs. Barrett. Hello? 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 Oh, nuts. I might have saved my breath. That you can go home too when you finish that accident. Oh, I haven't even started on it yet. Why don't you work and listen at the same time? Oh, I like to concentrate on my yacht. Uh, hey, what do you say, Al? Stick around and give me a hand, will you? I'll get through that much more quickly. Okay. Ah. Oh, no. Don't answer it. If you do, the hospital will send me another stiff and I'll be here all night. But, Tony, it's my job. Please, to... please don't answer it. Okay, I... I leave the receiver off the hook. They'll, uh, they'll think it's busy and get tired. Thanks. You're a doll. What do you want me to do? Uh, move the table over here while I get into my mother hubby. What did I do with that scalpel? I must try spraying my roses with this stuff. Ought to knock the buds for a loop. Oh, I can't understand if the line's continuously busy. Well, maybe the line's out of order. Call the operator. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, hello, operator. Look, I've been trying to get the number of the city more for, for about half an hour. There, there must be something wrong about it. Well, uh, we'll need that bottle. Huh? No. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. Uh, 
I think I'll make the incision in the neck. Well, I thought you were supposed to stick this thing in the abdomen. Oh, I like to vary my work. <clears throat> Hand me a piece of gauze, will you? Don't answer it. Okay. Yeah. You know, he didn't have any clothes on, any coat on when they brought him in here, and that's very funny because he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would be caught dead with his shirt sleeves. <laughs> I, I can't see a darn thing. My, my glasses are all clouded up. Must be steamy in here. Turn the fan on, will you, Al? Cold and clammy, if you ask me. Funny, you wouldn't think that a little thing like a heart stopping would make a man dead and not alive. My, my glasses are all clouded up again. I, I wonder. Hello, mortuary caretaker speaking. Yes. What? Say that again, lady. There's some dame on the phone babbling about uh, so, some guy with no coat that, that may not be dead. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. I was just getting the same idea. What's that? Come here, Al. Take a look at this guy. Am I crazy? Iron his lips, moving. Yeah. Oh my God! Get a hold of that name that's on the phone. Tell her to come down here. Maybe she can identify him. and Todd Andrews for a splendid performance in Dead Earnest. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment, I'll tell you about next week's suspense story. But first, here is a parade of Autolite products. Some of the more than 400 products made in the Autolite plant from coast to coast. The horns, the windshield wipers, relays, and spark coils. Spark plugs, ignition engineered resistor spark plugs. Yes, Autolite makes more than 400 automotive parts in its 28 plants from coast to coast. There's the wire. And the battery cable. Here come the starting motors, followed by the distributors. There are the generators. And the gas gauges. And now, of course, the batteries, Autolite stay full batteries. The batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use. So insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Be with us next Tuesday to see Postmortem, another gripping story in suspense. Be sure to listen to Suspense each Thursday night on your radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.